live, it seems. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Dev Beard Ups, where two bald, bald bearded guys get to talk about DevOps, automation, the cloud, and everything in between. Um, my name is Darko, and this is Kobus. And what is important about Dev Beard Ups, it's it's the beard of, beard of, beard ops. It's the beard of the inside that counts. <laughs> so, but also, also the beard ops. ops inside. Beard ops inside. Like, if you would call beard ops, is like beard ops your daily <laughs> beard streaming well, I mean, ritual? <laughs> there is there, there is that thing. Someone once told me I haven't been able to go verify it. So somebody else needs to please go read up on this, and I will also at some point to verify. But apparently. In general, people trust people with beards more than those without, especially in times of like conflict and stress. So I think also when you think about it, if my example that I normally use is um, what's the guy? I can't remember what the guy's name is, but he's known as Redbeard and he used to work on okay. CoreOS. So very deep in the nest of containers and he has a beard literally like till down here, this big thing. And I mean, he can tell you anything about containers and you'll believe it's true just by looking at him um yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> yes so beards help authority or uh, at least trustworthiness uh yeah so, <laughs> i guess that works to an extent um okay so kubus before we start um uh, how are you how was your weekend did you do something fun yes i actually continued with our little experiment from last week where i'm busy sorting out my container Let's just call it um, loving setup instead of calling it a mess. Okay. Um, and I actually made some progress there. Um, I got to a point where my reverse proxy is now working properly again. Previously, it didn't because I tried to connect it to ECS for service discovery. And the challenge okay. there is that um, the service discovery using ECS Anywhere on-prem has not yet been implemented. So when it tries ah. to do the uh, ECS or EC2 describe function on an on-prem you need to make a different API call, which hasn't been implemented. So I just went back to just um, mounting in the Docker uh, socket, and then it uses Docker, which means I can't do a distributed setup across multiple hosts, but I don't need that at the moment. So I'm yeah. happy for the moment. Okay, okay. Well, you know, yeah. features coming in. If you use ECS anywhere and want to use it on-prem and you wish to do some service discovery, let us know. Let the service team know. We, you know, the folks want to hear. That's how we operate, operate the services. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah. Well, I, 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 yeah, well, I was, uh, my weekend was, I had a lot of, I've get, had, had some guests over, so I had like some, some Berlin travels are all around, but uh, um, I actually spent the last couple of days just playing around with some old Linux computers, and um, my, my project of the week was like, can I do all the things in the command line? And when I say con the <laughs> command line, I mean, I mean, there's no, X compositing system. There's no, there's no Windows. There's no graphics at all. So, um, so far it's been interesting to like view websites in text mode only. But um, that's been that's been a that's, fun that, fun. <laughs> that sounds like if you install Gen two and you haven't gotten to the point of compiling KDE or GNOME yet. So, well, even before that, even like you you have not even compiled your X uh, Windows system at all. Oof. So like there's nothing like that. There's nothing that <laughs> um, that doesn't cannot directly write to the frame buffer can 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 work right. So that's pretty pretty fun. Oh yeah, the good old days. It's it's for us with a lot of free time, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. So so Darko, what are we doing today? All right, Actually, today's topic is um, about... today's topic is. Um, similar to my graphics, no graphics system, uh, Adventure is back to basics. Let's talk about some basic approaches to the cloud. When you, our wonderful engineer, developer, project manager, IT admin, um, decides that you want to use the cloud and you think about, hey, I want to use AWS. Usually a lot of things happen. <laughs> you go to AWS.Amazon.com, you register your account, and all of a sudden this wall of services comes at you. And you, how many services do we have, Copus? 200 plus? Uh, last official count I saw was 212, but that was before reInvent last year, so it's more exactly. than that. Exactly. Yeah. So, so 212 plus services out there, not to even mention how many features or other things exist out there. But you want to host a website. You want to host a container. You want a simple database or maybe just host some files on AWS. If only there was a simple way to do those things. Hmm. Foreshadowing. Is there? Well, mm. <laughs> is there? Hmm. Dun, dun, well, dun. Exa <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Ex actually, there is. There's a, there's a, is it a service? It's a collection of, of services um, that's um, called Amazon Lightsail. 
And light yes. sail is basically it's a completely separate thing. It, it uses separate uh, console and everything like that. It, it looks different. It plays different. It is still handled and 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 backed up by the big old AWS infrastructure, but it's 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 also I would I, I would call it much much more simpler, right? So yeah. that's the whole point. And it's not just simple; it's very predictable. Predictable. Uh, one of the problems some people struggle with is, hey, um, you know, uh, how much will this cost? <laughs> and mm. unless you have experience and you know how to do cost controls and building dashboards and all of those things, uh, sometimes it may be just. Um, how we say in Serbia, and you just have to slap yourself on the belly and guess what's the number of <laughs> what, how <laughs> much is how much the <laughs> exactly how much this is going to cost. You know, just like and with with light sale is different. Light sale actually has a very transparent pricing model, uh, similar to your run of the mill web hosting solutions out there. So um, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a great benefit to this. Mm. Kobus, did you have experience with Lightsail or have you used um, it? Yes, I've actually played around with it. I've for my own little projects and things. I've seen some people use it, and I would say the biggest benefit there is that what people sometimes miss when they think about building a system is that I want to go for the latest, greatest, yeah. fashionable thing. I want to, you know, plonk down a Kubernetes cluster. I want to do service discovery with service meshes, yeah. and you know, all those fancy things. And I actually only have one service I want to run. Because I've got a monolith. Yeah. Um, that's great for my CV, but uh, not so great for the business. <laughs> yeah. And often you tend to have this discussion with people saying, listen, so what are you actually doing? And then it comes down to, well, we've got this one application or one um, like web app that we're running. And then yeah. it's like, okay, um, and how do you want to run it? And they're like, well, we've got some code in a specific language, uh, PHP, um, Java, C Sharp, whatever. And we yeah. just want to run it. There's, there's nothing fancy behind it. And then, then you have the conversation like, well, you can go the route of building out your own infrastructure for all of this or spin up a light cell instance, deploy it to there, done. It's up and yeah. running. Yeah. And as you said, predictable, um, um, what do you call it, cost per month. You know exactly what the instance sizes are. It's yes. a simplistic interface. And you don't have to worry about the complexity because yeah. remember, the more time you spend on complexity, the less time you spend on actually getting um, features out. Yeah, and uh, as a uh, get gap says, to, yeah, I must put this on screen. This is hilarious because I've seen it so often. Resume is resume-driven <laughs> development. Um, unfortunate <laughs> fact of the matter is that Kubernetes solves a lot of problems very well, especially in larger orgs where you need to build your own platform. And unfortunately, the pay, well, I don't say unfortunately, fortunately, the pay is also very good for that, which yeah. then leads people to say, well, I want high pay. Kubernetes gives me high pay. Let's put Kubernetes in because I need the experience. Yep, yep, exactly. Exactly. And that, that happens more than you think, right? You know, like, oh, I host my personal blog on Kubernetes just so I can get some, uh, get some, um, get some experience with Kubernetes. So, you know, and, and that's fine. Again, if you want to do it for, do it for yourself, perfectly fine. It's an overkill, but mm. sometimes, sometimes, sometimes overkills are fun. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, Lightsail actually addresses a lot of those things. Uh, uh, Lightsail addresses this simplicity while still having the, the ability to have this big brunt of AWS behind it, right? Mm. It's, um, I, I've actually have friends who like run their web development business and uh, and they use other cloud providers. Well, actually not cloud providers. They use these um, hosting providers. And I asked them like, VPSs, so yeah. why? Yeah, VPSs. I'm like, why don't you just move on to AWS? He tells me mm. like, it's just so complicated. Like, mm. and he's not a developer. He's not an engineer. He's just a a, a guy mm. who runs a company that develops websites, and and and, and they they open up AWS and like, what is what is easy? What do mm. I do about this? So uh, a lot of times it's 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 so beneficial to have an option. Say, hey, click a button, launch a web server. You need WordPress? Click a button here, yeah, and it all runs. Right. So. I think the the name of the show should be gatekeeping, and I think light sale is one of the things <laughs> one one of the one of the things that um, um, sorry anti gatekeeping. Uh, one of the things that light sale is does is ex ex exactly that. It, it gives you the ability, even if you're not super technical, to actually have resources in the cloud. And um, mm -hmm. today we're going to be basically going through a bunch of different options. Uh, what's available on 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 um, on light sale? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know, it's um. I think the thing also important to understand here is that while there's a whole bunch of different AWS services, we build them based on what customers need. And unfortunately, uh, surprise, surprise, not everybody needs the same thing. Yes. Um, and that's that's unfortunately just the way the world is. It's, everybody does things differently. So 
correct, it. correct correct yeah. yeah um not it's not the same for everybody right um sometimes it's sometimes the simple solutions are just sufficient right so mm. um and and I think as as, as light cell grows, it, it just it it's becoming more complex in a sense. It has more and more and more features. So I'm waiting mm. for like in two years or three years where you have light cell with like <laughs> seventy different offerings. And um yeah, it's it's, it's good. it should be also very special. But um actually, you know, instead of just chatting about it, um let's let's do something. Ooh. Right. Um, let's bring up a console. Let's bring up a console. Uh share, share, share. I'm so glad you have to um my computer is acting a little bit weird, so I actually had to reboot before this session. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm not going to try and play anything today. <laughs> I'm 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 going to do these things. So Amazon mm. Light Sale. Well, actually, how do you get to Amazon Light Sale? Light Sale. Um, it's it's from the AWS console, right? So if you search um, Light Sale, uh, you should find it here, and it takes you to a completely different looking mm. web interface right oh it yeah. is it is it is very different it is still aws right so mind you this is still AWS, but it, it it has a different look and feel to it intentionally right so mm. it, it it wants to be different because um it's it's made for you know it, it doesn't want to to confuse you with the rest of the services right so yeah uh and i, I would say it, it looks really nice i'm not sure what you but you mm. but uh, i like the look of light sale my my only critique would be here just that I would prefer something with a, like a dark theme, but that's just personal preference because it feels like it's so light. But then, uh, that, then it would be called dark sale, wouldn't it? Dark sale. Wait, is there is there a way to do this to create? No, uh, you uh, could you could you could probably do it with some like monkey, CSS, grease monkey script or something. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like yeah, no. Amazon light sale theme. Uh, Make a dark mode, please, and call it dark sale. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, oh, we have a couple of folks here. Uh, Lost Cal Algorithm is here. Flexion is here. Dennis is here. Yeah. Uh, welcome back. Um, um, there's a comment by Word Dad. Word Dad. Um, I love Lightsail. I moved some of my small e-commerce stores into Lightsail. Ended up costing me one fourth of my original cost. Yeah, mm. it can be much more predictive in what you do and how you do it here. So um, I think mm. that's one of one of the one of the major benefits of of Lightsail. Mm. Well, but, let's let's click create instance and show folks that. Yeah. So so before before we click the create instance, there's a bunch of things Lightsail does. As you can see, it has instances, it has containers, it has databases, it has networking, storage, and well, snapshots. So mm -hmm. there's a bunch of different things you can do. When when I, when we start when I started, I think there was only instances. When when, yeah. when when Lightsail launched, it was only exclusively instances, and you can launch these very simple EC2 instances, uh, web servers. For own for your own use case, so <clears throat> let's actually do it. Create instance. I'm gonna stick to Germany uh, in this case. And here's the thing: you can pick platforms. Like you can do Windows or Linux, and you have these blueprints, mm -hmm. which are basically predefined stacks um, of of applications running on on a server, right? So you want to run WordPress, boom, right? You want to do some Nginx, boom. It's 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 very simple. Um, Red mine. That takes me back like at least 10, 15 years. Who used what, it? <laughs> I not, what is Red Redmine? Redmine is a task, is it like a, uh, like I think Bugzilla slash task management type system. <laughs> it was a bit friendlier than Bugzilla at the time. So we yeah. switched to that. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, you know, th these simple things are, are, well, I wouldn't call it s simple things. These relatively complex things are, are, are easy to set up like this, right? So it is just wonderful. Um, so like let's do WordPress, right? Why it's it's like the default thing you do. Uh, well, by the way, if you go on Windows, there's no predefined like stacks. You just launch as a Windows server and you do you mm -hmm. do the rest. For Linux, there yeah. are blueprints like this, or you can just do your your standard Linux without anything configured here, right? Mm. Um, yeah. Quick question there from yeah. uh, Ruan about can. Let me just pop it on the screen. Give me a sec. There we go. Can the community contribute to the Blueprint apps or AWS internal only? Actually, if you look at this closely, what you'll see over here is that in the middle of the screen, it's certified by Bitnami. Bitnami so we yeah. actually use um, Bitnami images for this. Um, so I would assume that first it has to go through Bitnami, and then we've got some kind of vetting process to decide which ones go yeah. on here. Um, yeah. But I mean, short version of the answer is no, the community, unfortunately, at the moment, yeah. cannot contribute uh, these. 
Yeah, exactly. You can do your own modifications, like doing specific launch scripts, like shell scripts. Mm -hmm. You know, the standard is you launch a web server on an EC2 instance. You can do like a user data script, basically create a a, a bash script here, and that will configure it yourself. But it, you cannot create these like uh, blueprints yourself, unfortunately. Um, so yeah. No. Um, all right. So um, the key pair it actually has its own sets of key pairs. I'm not gonna get into it. Um, this is, this is perfectly fine. And you can also enable automatic snapshots. Snapshot will just create your backups of your instance. Wonderful uh, for, well, you should always have backups, right? <laughs> and this is the, here's the meat and potatoes of the last, uh, of, of light sale. <laughs> Pricing, boom. Don't you wish there was something like this on EC2? Um, mm. You have it very transparent saying, hey, for three and a half bucks, US dollars, you get a half a gig RAM, one vCPU, and a, and a 20 gigs SSD, and one terabyte of transfer. Yeah. Right? That's it. It's it's simple as that. Now, you can go up to like $160 per month. I think you can you can do even more. I think it can be even more expensive with Windows. But um, mm. you know, it, this gets you like 32 gigs and eight vCPUs. It, it's it doesn't go overboard. It doesn't it, you you kind of mm. do like those massive, you know, uh, 256 core and 64 terabytes or whatever. Um, you kind of do those things here. But um, but um, I would argue if you get to that size, you're probably building something that exactly is more of a host for some other services or something. Exactly, 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 exactly. Yeah. So yeah, um, right. And then just give it your name. Let's do WordPress and let's do stream. Why not? Um, stream beard offs. Yeah. Uh, you can just you can do multiple instances if you want. Um, sometimes that's 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 valid, but in this case we don't mm. need to do it. And also tagging, but tagging is not important in this case. So we're gonna st stick to the cheapest one um, because you can actually have it free uh, for like um, for one month, which is pretty cool. And then create the instance, and that's it. Yeah. Right? No. No networking, uh, no, no. nothing. Like there's, there was no complex things here. It's like a predefined bundle, and that's it, right? Mm. And and you see, also we like recommend a couple of other services like GoDaddy Pro for your WordPress stuff. Uh, I don't even know what is Go GoDaddy Pro. Um, managing one on one. I think WordPress it's for sites. the managing and also multi sites. Yeah, because uh, I mean, getting WordPress up and running is not that hard. Managing completely different mm -hmm. discussion, especially mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. start getting multi site and a highly available load balanced. Yeah, yeah, it can get exactly. quite tricky, as exactly. you can imagine. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, um, we even recommend that. Now, it takes yeah. a moment for it to start. It should be relatively, uh, relatively fast. Um, but basically, what happens when it when it boots up? You can actually connect to this instance using your browser, <laughs> yep. which is which is like the default way of doing it. Um, you can of course use your standard SSH client and just get the key and just connect. Your you know yeah. your buddy or your terminal whatever, but most of the most of the time people will basically just connect using SSH using the the browser based SSH client, um, which is which is if you're launching WordPress, which is that that is one of the first things you need to do. Um, the way this was built by Bitnami is that you launch a WordPress website, and then what what do you do what what do you need to do then? What's the first thing I you would do? assume? Log it, do stuff, change it, add a theme. Exactly. Exactly. So if I open up this thing, like I, okay, I do this and I, hopefully it's running. It's not yet running, so it takes a moment or so. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as it as soon as soon it uh, boots up, I'm going to be able to access this uh, WordPress website, but I need to do something on WordPress. I need to log into the WordPress dashboard. Um, and, and I need a password for that. And, and the way it actually no. instructs you to do that is because you're using WordPress. Uh, does it actually state here? Yeah, if you scroll down. Scroll down. There is there is some 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 instruction here. How does it do it? So, da, 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 da. I know there's an instruction about WordPress. Oh no, it's here. Mm -hmm. So once you re refresh this, I think yeah, it takes a moment or so. Awesome. But basically, yeah, it, it has the key. It has the password on the system itself. Yeah. And so the first time you need to do, you actually need to log into the instance. And oh, there's a getting sorry guy. There you go. So. Yeah. Basically, what you need to do is SSH into the instance using connect to SSH or whatever you want. And there's just a, a file called Bitnami application password. And it's just, mm. you can cat it, just print it out on screen, get that password and use that password with WordPress. There we go. WordPress. Hello. Hello, world. Because of course. It's up and running. Um, 
I see last algorithm has uh, two questions here with regards to the first one, which is, does it take care of load balancing? We are going to get to that in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And the second one over here, he says, now that it's running, you can see the password, but I can only see seven asterisks. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I'm, so I'm sorry. I just, yeah. I just see asterisks. <laughs> this is an old internet joke for those on uh, wherever. Just go search for Hunter 2 password and you'll find the whole thread. It's from the IRC days. Hunter 2. Yeah, that's my favorite yes. password. Um, so, so let's do it. Um, I think I, can, I think I can connect to this instance now. So you will see if I go to manage, it's gonna take me. It's gonna explain basically what I need to do. Yeah. Um, if I go to where is the WordPress admin? There we go. Follow these instructions on how to retrieve your password. You probably need that uh, first. Yeah. So I need to go here and click connect to SSH. Now I need to share another screen. <laughs> Stop screen share. 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 Okay, good. All right. So this is this is the this is the the web based SSH client. Wonderful. It it just works. So let me just do this. I didn't have to enter a password, nothing like that. It just did it all for me. So there is there is a um like that. There is a bitnami application password here, right? So there's a there's a file call that and what I need to do is cat that file but not in front of you all because <laughs> there are some quick fingers in the audience who may go and change the password so let me just go off screen um, cat the bitnami password um, and yeah yeah I know I know you all want to hack hack the world um, and I can actually just go here uh, not change my camera but share my screen share this screen yes and then let's go here and you can do just a WP admin in the top. Boom, WordPress. user, and then the password hunter2. And mm -hmm. well, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So yep. I am now logged in into WordPress. Actually, you can be logged into WordPress like this and you can get started. Get mm -hmm. your post running and that's it. You have a WordPress blog in how many minutes? Six minutes or whatever, right? And it only costs three I, and a half yeah. bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so pretty cool, pretty simple, um, and really fast. Yeah. All right. So I will leave this as it is right now, and we're going to talk about something else. Uh, but before we talk about something else, hello Twitch, hi, uh, or not just Twitch. We have a lot of folks here. <laughs> hello, hello everybody on stream. Welcome to Dead Beard Ops. This is um, this is July the twenty first, Wednesday. Yes. Um, today, Kobus, this gentleman here, we get to talk about the basics the simple things on AWS. That is Amazon Light Sale. How you can do simple things such as host a website, host some files, maybe do a database and some networking on AWS in a, with, a, with a lovely service called Amazon Light Sale. What we've done just now is we've launched a WordPress blog on Light Sale in like six minutes. So, so welcome. Um, and yeah, let us know. Have you been using Light Sale? Have you been using mm. something like this? Do you host WordPress and how do you do it? Yeah. Because, I mean, oh, okay. Hey, Paul K. Shade. Hello. Oh, it's Paul. It's Paul. Paul from AWS. Paul. Paul is a host of another show based in Australia. It's called Devs in the Shed. So if you're awake, awake in, the, in their time zones, they also do a lovely show on Wednesdays. Him and his friend, I'm not sure who, who, who's the other, other gentleman, but uh, Paul and, uh, and, and some other, uh, other fellow Amazonian, they do a, a lovely uh, Twitch show called Devs in the Shed. And they actually sit in sheds. Which is fun, Matt. There you oh, go, wow. Matt. Matt. So nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, make sure to check them out as well. If is, if you is it are a bike in... shed, <laughs> it's a bike shed. <laughs> it's a shed. And what color is the bike shed? Uh, what color? <laughs> 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 so let's do one more thing. Now, yes, I want I want to have a look at storage because this is the yes. latest feature coming out from. So I think last week, last week this thing was released. <sighs> I could. I wish yeah. I, could, I could square it up. Object storage. Kobus, what is object storage? It's where you store objects, and I'm just reading from the uh, you know comment above the code for it, because you know there's always a get object method, and the method's description is gets an object. Okay. okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, uh, an object store is where you store well objects, which can okay. be, for example, files. And how it differs from example disk is that what it looks like you're using something like a folder. So let's say slash my data slash my app one slash file. 
Yeah. The part on the front is actually just a uh, a key for it, like a part of the lookup key. So it's the actual file name accompanied with a prefix. That's the key. And yep. it you just put it in there, and that's just how it's visually represented. It's not physical directory structures. It literally is just objects with, like I said, inside yep. that structure, which also means that it doesn't quite behave like a file system in the sense yes. that you don't mount it. There are ways you can mount S3. Just remember that will cause potential issues because it is not POSIX compliant for those yes. who know what POSIX compliant file systems are. Um, so you use APIs to actually put objects, get objects, and interact with them via an API instead of like just using, like I said, a mount object or a mount e file. Exactly. So if you wish to store objects, your images, your videos, your files, whatever, on object storage, think of it as it's not a file system, right? It's just... Mm files exist somewhere and you retrieve them not through a file system in essence if you ever use aws you heard of amazon s3 amazon s3 is our object storage but um s3 i wouldn't call s3 complicated but i would call s3 very competent um, there's a lot of features a lot of things you can do with s3 um it's it's the backbone of a lot of things out there in the world mm. and what Amazon LightSail uh, object storage, basically it's simplified S3. Now it is all running on S3, it's all doing on S3, but it's much more simplified. Now, why would I do this, right? Let's say I have this wonderful WordPress website, right? Why would I use S3? Let's say I wanna store videos or, uh, or images. Instead of storing them on a server which has 20 gigabytes of storage, why don't I store them on an S3 bucket and have WordPress actually source those files from there, right? That's, a, that's an amazing use case for S3 or, or object storage in this case. You could do that in the past. There's a, there's a lovely plugin for, um, for WordPress called, uh, let's actually search for it. There's a plugin called something, something, uh, WF3 WordPress mm. offload, this one. So yeah. basically it offload, offload media light, it offloads, media files to Amazon S3. And I'm gonna install mm -hmm. this plugin right right now. It's gonna be available on my WordPress website. Now I can go ahead and to Amazon S3 and create a bucket and do all of those things. Um, but it is much simpler to do it through LightSail. So let's actually do that. Create the bucket. Uh, I'm gonna keep it in Germany. And again, storage plans. <laughs> you have five gigs of storage for a buck a month and you have 25 gigs of transfer, right? That's actually, it's, I'm trying to think now no, I can't remember the exact pricing. I was going to say I wanted to suck what the pricing is, but I can't. I, I I I wouldn't know like I wouldn't know how to compare this to actual S3 pricing, but uh, basically this is it, right? You can get a hundred gigs for three bucks, and you can uh, two hundred fifty gigs for five dollars, <laughs> right? So it's yeah. It's at, at this point I've often seen people like have these discussions like, ooh, which one do I do because I want to optimize the bull, but. Literally, the, the time you just spent on thinking between five and 100 gigs yeah. might cost more. And if you think about what your hourly rate or minute rate yeah. is, then just going <laughs> pick 100 and go or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, if you do the, the one, this one, you have like you have it free for the first 12 months, right? You can have this mm. five gigs, um, 25 gigs of transfer for, 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 for the first 12 months for free. So and that's it. It gives it creates a name here. Boom, boom. The bucket has been created, right? So. Um, and that's it, right? The bucket has been created. You can actually manage your objects through this, right? It has a, your standard file system structure, even though it's not a file system. Um, but it's, what's wonderful about this is the permissions. So if you want to give a specific instance access to this bucket, instead of figuring out bucket policies, those lovely JSON objects and all the stuff, you can just attach instance, boom, WordPress, Boom, that's it. This instance now has permissions to access stuff on my on, in my bucket, which is just wonderful, right? So I think that's a that's a really neat way to do it. So if I would go into my instance and just uh, try to access content from this bucket, I would be able to do so right now because I just give it permission, right? But I want to do something else. I want to actually Ooh. host my website files, right? So if let's say let's create a blog, let's create a new blog uh, blog post. So, uh, and by the way, I am not a fan of this <laughs> this editor. <laughs> I I am a person who writes Markdown, and like when I see yep. this uh, WYSIWYG or what you see, what you get, uh, I'm not a fan. Not a fan of it. Mm. Hello, stream, not stream, 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 stream. And then 
I want to add some content here. Right? So, what I am um, Ipsum Dolores. Oh, you need to get the bacon one. There's that bacon Laura the bacon one. <laughs> it just throws the word bacon in the whole time. I think bacon ham and other things, but yeah, like quite a few funny ones like that you can get. So I want to add a picture now. So if I go here and upload like an image, um, so let's do that. If I go and upload an image, it's going to upload an image directly to my website, but let's not do that. Let's actually go and configure yes. our plugin, the WP offload media light. I'm going to activate it. And also I'm going to, I'm going to give permissions to my bucket for, um, to be accessible to the world, right? Because here's the thing. Once you upload an image to the bucket, you want to be able to have everybody access that image, that video. So I'm going to just make it public and read only. Yeah, I understand. It's very important. You know what you're doing because if you have confidential yes. information in a bucket, making it public to the everybody could be a potential problem. Exactly. But if it's all, all public information, that's fine. Yeah. Sabe. Um, all right. Then back to this thing. If I go here and settings, and this uh, this thing actually pr gives me the ability to host uh, my files on, on uh, DigitalOcean and also on, on Google Cloud. I'm going to mm. do Amazon S3, and I love the fact that you're using the lo old logo. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. That's quite old. <laughs> That's quite old. So you can actually define your keys here. I'm not going to do that. Uh, and I'm going to say that my server is on Amazon Web Services. So basically, yeah. this server has permission to write to this bucket. You remember that permission I gave it before? This is it. Click next. And it, it asks for a bucket name. Now my bucket name is bucket Luez 9P. Copy this. Aww. Boom. Now I'll always think about Luez the bucket. Luez the bucket. Luez the bucket, yes. saving bucket settings. Uh, you need to force HTTPS. It doesn't work without this. So you need to force HTTPS. Yeah. Um, and that's it. So what it will do, it will actually copy the files to a bucket. It will create a specific uh, path to there. It will do all the versioning. Mm. It's actually going to do rewriting media files. And th this thing, this plugin actually resizes your images. So it's not done not by, by light sale. It's actually done by this plugin. So um, mm. it, it's going to do a bunch of things. Save that. And this is also just for those folks wondering why this could be important is, especially if you want to go highly available and you want to spin up a yeah. second instance of WordPress. Because remember, if you save the image yeah. on the specific instance, instance two doesn't have it. So exactly. it needs to be able to get to that image. Correct. All right, that's fine. Perfect. Now let's go back to the post and hello stream. And let's add an yep. image. Uh, let's add an image. Image upload file. All right, so uh, let me find a nice image. I think I have something somewhere. Doom, uh, doom, doom. Boom. All right. Oh, I've seen this one before. So this image is now uploaded to my website, well, to my blog post. So if I save yes. draft and do the preview, well, actually, first of all, let's go here. Let's go to objects and refresh. Boom. WordPress Ooh. content uploads 2021. Mm. July. When the right year. Random number. And there's different sizes of this object. Oh, wow. This is, That's this is nice. being done by the plugin. So mm. it's not us, but it has been uploaded to this bucket. And if I go to this one, and you can see this thing is now here. I don't know why it's not playing. Uh, mm. It's a GIF file. So, um, but yeah. If you inspect this object, you will see that the link here is actually. A, uh, Ooh, it's very uh, small. It's, it's very small. Yeah, let me try to zoom in as much as I can. Um, boy. And zoom in, and zoom in. Can I do this? Yes, I can. So, uh, inspect. You will see that this, as you can see, content source is HTTPS bucket thing EU central. Blah, 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 right. So it's not yep. it's not pulling the stuff from the web server, it's actually pulling this image from the bucket, which is mm. just great, right? Um, you know, all of your media can be offloaded to that bucket to make it so much more accessible from different servers and whatnot. So yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Paul asks, so okay, there's a couple of questions here. Um, uh, okay, Dennis, inspired you to do a, a video on light sale. Yeah, check it out. It's it's wonderful. A lot of features here. Um, lost algorithm. Can I use these buckets in EC2 when my application outgrows the light sale offering? So this bucket does not exist in your account, right? If you go to your S3 site, it's not available there. Uh, so far, I think there is no way to 
export this bucket to your uh, AWS account. I'm not really sure if that's a, if that's the case or not, but I think there's no mm. way to do it right now. For EC2 instances, you can do that. You can actually export EC2 instances from LightSail, sorry, LightSail instances to EC2, but I don't think you can do a bucket here. So you cannot access these files from outside of LightSail. So that's that's kind of a, a, a thing, to how it works. Mm. Um, you also have this wonderful storage quota thing, which you kind of kind of view view your stuff here. So that's pretty cool. Right? Um, Juice Weasel, um, does this mean that the bucket is allowing public access? Absolutely. So if you go to a file here and you find something like this one, and I would uh, get its uh, URL like that, boom, it's publicly ac yeah. accessible, right? I've made it publicly accessible. I made all the objects here publicly accessible. You can change per object. Like I can basically just do like maybe just uploads, make it, uh, I think I can I can do like, uh, can I do permissions for objects themselves? Mm -hmm. I don't I think do... so. I think this is set on the bucket level. Yeah, it's set on the bucket level. So I mean, there's a bucket policy for that first, if yeah. you go to the normal S3 service. No, you can actually do it. Check it out. So if oh, I do okay. private, save, mm -hmm. and then do all objects, uh, this thing, then, 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 then. Uh, it's, it's not super super great this mm. oh individual object access permissions are ignored when your box bucket is private right yeah individual objects can be made there we go this is the option so if i do this yeah. boom mm. so now individual objects can be made public mm. and i mean this is a this is a very deliberate choice because if you think about it if i say my bucket is private and yeah. somebody went and said some of the um the files in there is public i wouldn't want to expect those files to be public because i just went bucket don't show Correct. stuff. Correct. Uh, so that's why we've got this uh, middle option. Yeah, exactly. So, and it, it, as you can see, this object is public now, uh, but I think it's public because uh, the plugin made it public, right? Even though my mm -hmm. bucket is not public, if I would up, if I would upload a file directly, you know, from uh, from from here, right? Um, this file should not be public, right? So it's, it's in, this object is private. If I try to open it, I'll get an access denied. Yeah. But the files uploaded by the plugin will be automatically made. Um, mm, uh, that's public. actually a nice touch. It's, it's a very cool thing. Yeah. So mm. as you can see here, um, all of these things are, are public. So yeah, uh, Dennis asks, um, uh, do you have access through the API? Um, I don't know. Um, to be honest, like Probably. maybe through the light sale API, but not through the S3 API. So it is if you can do it, it's only it's only possible through the through the LightSail API, which is which is different than 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 um, than your uh, than your S3 API in this case. But yeah, so so we have one thing: we have a WordPress instance. We have offloaded the content um, of this WordPress instance to an S3 website. Mm -hmm. um, there was a comment here by somebody. Uh, is it loss algorithm? Uh, load balancing. Yes. Um, mm. Talking about load balancing, um, there are there there are load balancing options on LightSail, right? You can create a specific load balancer on LightSail. So let's mm. try to do it. So create load balancer. You can um, okay. You need to you cannot do HTTPS because you need to attach a certificate. Let's do a load balancer like this. But... And it costs money. Yes. So just quickly, there is something apparently I heard when you use a container for your service, you can yeah. actually get the HTTPS certificate much easier. You don't have let's, to. Uh, let's try it. We can try it. Yeah. So I have launched a container. So you can launch containers on LightSail. Balls. Right. Uh, let's actually mm. show you how this works. So oh, you I can, like the icon you used. Which one? Oh, yeah, this one, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you can actually create a container service on on LightSail. It's it's very simple. You create, uh, you you choose which which choose the power. <laughs> I love choose the power here. I, I feel like it's a bad translation for something, Ooh. but it's you get to choose the power. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna use micro power in this case because it's efficient. But the question is, uh, Docker, do you have the power? I have dun, the power. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and you can see how he has one gigs of RAM and, and a quarter Whoa. of a CPU. So. Yeah. Um, you can do just uh, the, the micro power. And I'm gonna just select the number of services to two. What this will in essence yeah. do, it will create two containers of this configuration and run them. Um, set up a deployment. This is where you choose a specific application you wanna run, right? You can do yep. a custom deployment where you can actually get your image just from a specific image, yeah. repository, 
you can do a, a, a launch command, you can do a whole bunch of things, but hey, this is a demo. Let's do a simple hello world thing, right? And that's it, right? It's a hello world container, it's gonna do port 80, HTTP, bam, right? Container service, I'm gonna call it, not service two, but let's call it uh, uh, container stream uh, uh, beard ops, right there, there beard ops. Oh, Doc, and now you just have to throw an underscore in there and you'll mess up the naming completely. I, I messed it up. It you actually, went capitals. It, 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 it corrected me. That is what's known as a capital offense. Capital offense. But it, it fixed it. it. It needs to be lowercase. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's going to cost me 20 bucks a month. So, it's very clear. Here's the amount of money it's going to cost you. So, pretty cool. Yeah. And that's it. Great. Um, just hold, oh, okay. I was going to say before you click the button. Um, lost algorithm just had a question there about whether or not you can only use public um, images for that. Um Hmm. I'm I didn't sure. check. I, I didn't check. So you can do a public registry and you can do it from your local machine, right? Mm. So um, I don't think you can do it from a private repo in this case. Mm. Um, uh, you can oh, do it it does actually fit in. Yeah, it actually fits in with the, yeah. the mindset of Lightsell if you think about it, because setting up a CRCD pipeline to build an image and push it and set up a private repository um, mm. is a little bit more technical. Okay. Um, yeah. And might be outside, I think, the scope of what people want to do. Correct. Um, whereas you go from just building locally and then deploying it, I think, is more yeah. if you think of the target audience of people. Exactly. The service. You can you can push like local containers, like using the AWS CLI by basically the light cell command. Mm -hmm. You can push a container image from your local machine to mm -hmm. to, to your light cell instance, which is which is yeah. you know sometimes just sufficient. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, only public registries and, and your own uh, local machine. So, All right. mm. it, it's a middle ground. Yeah, last time, you know, sometimes we approach services like this. It's a very simple service. It's, it, it provides a lot of functionality. Well, it, it provides sufficient functionality. Yeah. But it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. And that's normal. Like, I, I always like, oh, I wish this had this. But then you just go to ECS and do all of that, right? Oh, but it's not as simple. Yeah, so it's, it, it's a middle ground. Um, all right. So, you can see that this container service is currently deploying. It takes a while. Uh, I actually, in, in the in the in the in the in the spirit of cooking shows, I already have like a container running somewhere that I've launched Ooh, this morning. A perfectly it's, baked cake a that didn't follow baked. the slips you showed us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only difference is it's it has a different name and it has five capacity, right? Ooh. Five nodes. It doesn't mean anything, right? But here you can see that it's it's running on a load balancer. And look at this. Wonderful. Mm. So uh, yeah, it's this is this is the Hello World application now uh, running on, on this thing. You can do custom domains, right? You can actually attach a specific mm. custom domain if you have a certificate for for your domain, all that stuff, and attach it to this yeah. thing. So pretty, pretty, pretty wonderful. It does load balancing for you in this case, right? So you don't even have to worry about load balancing. I don't even know there's a load balancer in front or something. It just I just hit this thing and it just gets me my containers. Oh, yeah. Simple as that. So a very very light and an easy way to uh, you know access your. Would you say it's a light way to sail? I'm just here for the dad jokes. <laughs> Copas. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how you break Darko, folks. Yeah, you just sell, say a super super bad joke, and you just, I just stop. <laughs> yeah, so. Containers. This is a really neat way to do containers, and mm -hmm. you don't have to again worry about um, any load balancing, um, no networking whatsoever. Here's your container. Here's your uh, here's your uh, public image. Here's your local uh, local uh, image. Run it, and here's the URL for your application. Bye bye. Right, um, and and that's it. Right. So, oh, let me drop a link. Why not? Please yeah. load test my um, my thing here. Um, uh, by the way, Let's see uh, what happens. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I have a, I have a, I have an ask from somebody here. If any of you are following me on LinkedIn, um, go to my LinkedIn page. I'm actually streaming this on LinkedIn as well. I want to, mm. I want to see how StreamYard works with LinkedIn. If you can just drop, actually, mm. let me pop in a link here. Uh, if, if you can just check out this video and just post a comment there, right? Just say hello. I want to see how does this, how does this thing work um, mm. with with LinkedIn. Yeah, because the thing is that uh, the funny part is that we can't post a comment to LinkedIn from StreamYard. Yeah, so we're exactly, curious yeah. to see if the comments come in, because otherwise uh, it'd be very uh, 
unpleasant if someone's asking us some really interesting questions and uh, yeah, we um, just go like la di da di da exactly exactly so if you can just go there um just say hello um that's all i ask um you don't even ha- you uh-huh. don't even have to okay it works. it works thank you hey. nice let me just pop it in uh i want to see if the if the image works so dennis but your image doesn't show. I think that's uh, that's some limitations of uh, of, yeah, image of shows. You see Dennis's image. Yeah, I see Dennis's face. Oh, I think this you? is still Dennis pre haircut days, though. But it's not quite as rough ah, as, as it was oh, on okay. haircut day. Ah, so, so my my streamer doesn't show it for me. I see it on Twitch, but my streamer doesn't show it because ah. I think it's, I do some filtering or something like that. And like for example, there's a person called LinkedIn user. Uh, no, no LinkedIn user. Uh, this is mm. because you have made your profile not public and we cannot see it. So <laughs> cool. Uh, thank you. And there's also, yeah, okay, there's subtitles. subtitles. On, 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 yeah, it automatically generates subtitles as we talk. I don't oh, know wow. how that works. I'm not sure how. how I've seen <laughs> that work very badly. <laughs> exactly. So do not do not count on those subtitles if, too much. Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah, Lost Algorithm. Yeah. If, if, Lost Algorithm, if your account is uh, hidden from public, uh, it will not show up, it will mm. not put your name. Or a face on this thing, so, which is fine, right? But cool. Uh, I like that this works. Excellent. Yeah. Now right. we know. Thank now you. we know. <laughs> so uh, let's slowly wrap up, and I want to just chat uh, a bit more about Lightsail and, and the things here. So we, what we've done today is we've launched a WordPress instance uh, using Lightsail instances. We've created an object storage using um, a bucket in in, in Lightsail, and we also for the kicks. Uh, launched a container service which is currently running i think this one is running as well um it is yeah so it's Mm. we we've we've basically shown how you can create certain things from your instances typical web servers to your container-based applications to some object storage on amazon light sale right kubus what was the what was the um what's your what's your feeling about all of this what's the what's the main point what's the main um What's the main takeaway from from light sale for you? I mean, literally what it says on the tin, which is a simple way to run things. Um, granted, it's that balance between if you make something very simple, you don't have as much configuration control over it to do small nuance. Yeah. I have to do it in my way type thing. But just, I mean, to get something up and running in the cloud without having to then worry about, um, like, if you want to move away from a VPS pro- provider or yeah. better yet, move away from your uh, server under the desk, which I'm sure we all have. Um, it's a great service to get started with. I mean, it, it, it eases you into the ecosystem. Um, yeah. Because which is, and I understand the challenge there. It's like, there's a lot going on out there, but I mean, it's like dropping someone who's just finished like a small coding um, bootcamp or let's say a comp side degree and putting them in a large enterprise and saying, well, okay, by the way, this is how things work. And you go like, well, there's 50,000 things. Exactly. Because those 50,000 things have been built over years and years. So you can't yeah. just absorb it. Exactly. So there's a lot of ways you can do specific things. A lot of ways you can do all the things on top of AWS. But Amazon Lightsail gives you a few ways you can do certain things, which in essence are simpler, are more transparent in the way they're built and the way they work. Um, and yeah. there's somebody mentioned here, I think it was lost already, that you like the layer of abstraction, uh, the level of abstraction. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's okay, right? It, sometimes this gives you the the focus on what you're actually doing. If you are a blogger, right, you are not a person who is in IT, you don't care too much for it, but you want to create this great blog and you want to write on your own platform with some additional control. You don't have to worry about setting up your own WordPress site completely from scratch on an instance and you know your Apache's, Nginx's, databases, all that stuff. Click a button here, three bucks a mm, month. Yeah, no, definitely. We'll get you most of the things you need. While, while still being more than just your s- typical service as a service or the software as a service. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's that's kind of a... Um, Father Goblin, does it also have CloudFront baked in? Well, you can actually enable CloudFront. It's actually called distribution here, but you can create mm-hmm. a distribution that yep. will speed up the content uh, distribution, you know, basically from your WordPress website. Uh, it needs a static IP and all this stuff, So, but it will actually do mm-hmm. all of these things. You, you, and, and, and it's very simple. It's it's mm. very much like if you ever worked with CloudFront before. So many options, <laughs> so many yeah. things exist there. You look at it like okay, what origins and caching and what? Yeah, boom, you're done, right? Mm. <laughs> very simple, and of course your cost is going to be uh, displayed here as well. So, I think this in itself is just wonderful. 
uh, uh, next time, I think next week, we're going to look at more things, right? Next week, Kobus and I are actually going to look at the distribution part. Uh, we're going to look mm. at, uh, at load balancers, so see if we can actually create our own load balancer. And more importantly, we're going to look at databases. This gives Yay. you the ability to actually run a database on light sale, right? Your typical RDS databases. But we want to have a look how does it work? How can we actually integrate it with something here? And and yeah, so all this. So um, I want to see something. There was, uh, it's not here. I thought it was, I thought it existed. Uh. So there is there is a wonderful, wonderful blog post or how-to guide on how to launch a Minecraft server Ooh. on light sale. So uh, yes. You're grabbing the link quickly, yeah. yeah There's yeah. also one so, for Valheim, actually, if you want, if you're playing that. So pasting the link here, if you want to have a look, but it's it's um, it's a wonderful way to run your own Minecraft server on Lightsail, right? So it kind of explains to you what you need to do, like just sign Ubuntu, and it shows you all the things you need to configure mm -hmm. and set up. I play a lot of Minecraft. I play Minecraft with friends, and this is just wonderful. Uh, for me to set Ooh. it up myself so yeah although um, <laughs> i disagree with those commands i would not use screen to re run in the background it needs to be a server service yeah yeah i agree well so so but, for minecraft for minecraft in essence you don't need to do it uh, because it's basically just, unless you create a service you know like like a full-blown service it's basically just a java application running mm -hmm. um you know you can create a, a systemd service all that stuff but um, I usually just run it like this as well. <laughs> Not using screen, but Tmux, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're interested, this is a really neat way to do it. Um, yeah. Awesome. Shenril, uh, I just want to answer this question. Is there a reason for software not being the latest? Is there some light, 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 sale, light sale integration? What software is not being the latest? Um, I'm assuming like the blueprints like we've got things? there, but I mean... Blueprints? I would say I would say that the the, the limitations mm -hmm. of like WordPress five six and all that stuff. Um, I think it's basically the certification by Bitnami. You know, it 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 does you know, lag behind for something. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if Bitnami has a has the has the latest version of 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 this thing available, right? So bit, uh, the latest mm -hmm. version is still five point seven on on the on the marketplace. So yeah, uh, you know, yeah. So <laughs> you can I mean if and, you. You can do it you yourself. Can probably right? update from, yeah, you can probably upgrade from within the WordPress instance. I remember there was an upgrade button in there. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Can you do it actually? Wait a second. I'm really interested. Can you? Can you Let's do, do this? Can you... Upgrade it now. Upgrade now. Upgrade now. We have five minutes left. Um, yep. Yeah, and then reboot and we're done. <laughs> Where does one do users' uh, dashboard settings? But I don't think you can you do up. I, I, I'm not a WordPress person, um, right? So. Um, I don't think you can up update WordPress just like this. You can. I remember doing Should. it. Um... I was on a WordPress conference once. Um, I felt so out of place there because I was talking about mm. the cloud, but I knew nothing about WordPress. And I'm sorry, WordPress people, you are all so passionate about this uh, service. I don't know. Mm, just haven't Spot used on. it, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think, there was there's definitely a button here somewhere. Oh, come on. Dashboard, uh, dashboard updates. updates. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. updates. I would have expected. Yeah, here we go. Does it work? Yeah, you want updates? Right. Uh, Reinstall version 5.8. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Chill <Click> try. <laughs> yep. YOLO. YOLO. Um, yep. I clicked the button. I mean, this is how you learn. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> oh, PHP jokes. All right. Just me. Is this it? I think we're done. Is that, that was quick. No, I think that was it. No, 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 no. That can't be it. Oh, wow. That's it? Yep. Remember, it's just a bunch of files. It's got good bandwidth. Grabs it, installs it, restarts. Well, does it restart because it's PHP? Mm, it doesn't restart, yeah. I think. No, no. It just replaces it. the files. Yeah. Well, Shenril, there you go. <laughs> you can yeah. install the latest version of PHP if you want. Well, bam. It takes seven seconds. <laughs> and it doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't really destroy anything, hopefully. And you didn't um, have to reboot. You didn't have to reboot, yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and does this thing work? Uh, it works, yeah. Still works. Yeah, everything's still there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Well, there, there you go. Uh, cool. All right. Um, with that being said, what did we do today? I've only mentioned this, but light sale, a really simple, approachable way for you to do things on the cloud, right? If you don't want to run the 20, 214 plus services available on AWS, 
uh, and you just want to run your WordPress website, some containers, maybe some storage or databases, um, Amazon Light Sale. Simple, mm. transparent, and just beautiful to look at, I must say. Um, next week, this gentleman and I will uh, continue our Light Sale sailing adventure. Whatever. Aye, aye, Captain. Aye, 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 Captain. Uh, We're going to be looking at some databases. We're going to be looking at load balancers and the CDN as well. So um, to wrap up the wrap up the wrap up the light sail um, sail. Uh, So so yeah, thank you all. Uh, Make sure to join us next Wednesday, same place, Twitch.tv/abs at 1 p.m. Central European time or your local equivalent. Uh, Make sure to join us here. Follow us on the on the social medias. uh, we have, I want to remove this banner here so you can see the social medias. There's the social media links there. Follow us there. Um, there's a YouTube channel called Not Cobus, Not Darko, where all the recordings of, yeah, that thing, all the recordings of previous live streams exist. If you enjoy mm-hmm. watching two bald guys stumble across DevOps and the cloud and AWS and everything in between, please do join us and follow us and, and all, the, all, the, all, the, all the fun things. Once again, thank cool. you all. Cobus, thank you. And, we um, need some outro music. I like that we need outro. chill, yeah. chill outro music. And we can uh, wait for it. Sail up into the sunset. <laughs> and now Docker can soak. I've read this really horrible dad joke. I think I told you, like, uh, uh, how do, how do, how do celebrities stay cool? No. They have a lot of fans. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. Goodbye, everybody. Adios. (laughs) Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Before we get.